Thinking about applying to an honors college or honors program? In this video, I'll walk you through everything you need to know when deciding if an honors experience is the right choice for you. Hi everybody, Dave here from College Transitions. On this channel, we address questions directly from our audience, providing advice that you need to navigate the college search, admission, and financial aid process. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And at any point during the video, feel free to check out the links below to review blogs and other material related to today's topic. This week, we'll be answering a question from Miranda in Collingswood, New Jersey, who writes, I've always wanted to go to a small liberal arts college, but now my parents are pressuring me to look at honors programs at public universities to save money. Is it possible to get the same type of college experience that I desire in a program like this? Before we directly answer Miranda's question, let's make sure we're all working with the same knowledge base. Honors colleges come in two varieties. They can be housed within large, comprehensive universities, like Schreier at Penn State or Barrett at Arizona State, or they can be completely separate entities, like St. Mary's in Maryland or New College of Florida. In some cases, a school will offer an honors program as opposed to a full-blown college, and that's where things get really confusing, because sometimes the terms are used almost interchangeably. But other times, a program can be indicative of a less comprehensive experience than a college. To truly determine quality, you need to go beyond nomenclature and do some serious homework. At its best, an honors college or program can offer you the in-class intimacy of a tiny liberal arts school without having to sacrifice the bright lights of a vibrant, sprawling campus, the big-time sports, and the chance to get to be part of a large and passionate student community. It's a pretty cool blend of experiences, but to return to Miranda's question, will it be the same quality as a liberal arts school? In our experience, this is dependent on a handful of factors. Class size, number of course offerings, how closely you will work with faculty on research, a thesis or other independent project, and whether the option exists for honors living arrangements. Ideally, an honors college will offer a wide variety of honors-only courses and class sizes commensurate with those of elite liberal arts schools, typically in the range of 15 to 20 students. For example, Barksdale College at the University of Mississippi boasts over 70 honors courses and class sizes of fewer than 15 students. Indiana, Miami, and Temple University all offer vast course selection and class sizes under 20. Another key aspect of evaluating an honors college are the living arrangements and special honors-only perks being offered. The University of South Carolina encourages freshmen to live on their honors-only residence, which even includes three lecture halls that allow students to get to class without even stepping foot outside. Boston University actually requires members of its Kilachand Honors College to live in a designated honors dorm as a freshman. Drexel University makes uh, separate housing totally optional, but offers an honors dorm featuring special guest lecturers and faculty dinners on a regular basis. Let's look at another reason why honors colleges are worth your consideration, cost. Not only do in-state applicants have access to tuition rates that will be a fraction of the sticker price of a private university, but many schools offer automatic scholarships to admitted honors students or offer additional scholarships to which only honors students can apply. This is the case at the University of Washington, Northeastern, and Colorado State, just to name a few. Finally, let's touch on admissions, because not everyone is going to have the credentials required to get accepted into an honors college. Some honors colleges have relatively formulaic requirements. The University of Pittsburgh automatically allows freshmen to take honors classes if they have a minimum SAT score of 1450 and graduate in the top 5% of their high school class. Clemson's Calhoun Honors College will consider applicants with a 1380 SAT and above, but warns that the average accepted applicant possesses a 1480 and also graduated in the top 3% of their high school class. Clark Honors College at the University of Oregon takes a more holistic approach, explicitly stating that there are no minimum academic requirements and that qualities such as creative potential and community contributions are given serious consideration in the admissions process. To summarize, Honors colleges or reputable honors programs can be cost-effective and highly rewarding undergraduate experience for high-caliber students. You get to enjoy all the benefits of a large university, from research opportunities to athletics to a diverse student body, while still benefiting from an intimate, rigorous, and individualized experience, typically only found at elite liberal arts colleges. It is critical, however, to do sufficient homework on any program you are considering, as not all honors colleges are created equal. Thanks for listening, everyone. Hope to see you again next week. If you like what you heard on this video and want to learn more about the college admissions process, please follow us on social media or visit us at collegetransitions.com.